This is Dr. Neil Kapadia giving a talk on lower abdominal pain in the young female. Uh, it's a very common complaint in uh, patients presenting to the emergency department, and it's important to have a good history and physical as well as a knowledge of your differential diagnosis when approaching this patient. Our clinical scenario here is a 23-year-old sexually active female presenting uh, to the emergency department with lower abdominal pain for the last two days. As stated, uh, the history and physical is extremely important in these patients. It can help narrow your differential diagnosis to maybe one or two things and help narrow what tests you're going to need. As stated, the uh, history is uh, extremely important. Asking the patient where the location of the pain is. Uh, is the pain, if located in the right lower quadrant, um, the left lower quadrant, suprapubic region, the periumbilical region, uh, vaginal plane or flank pain can really help uh, narrow the, the diagnosis down. Uh, you have to, if possible, ask the patient specifically with one finger where their pain is located if they're able to localize it. Additionally, important relieving and exacerbating factors. What makes the pain better? What makes the pain worse? knowing if they've taken anything for the pain that helps relieve the pain. The quality of the pain, is it sharp, is it dull, is it achy, is it crampy? It's useful sometimes to use the pain scale on a scale of 0 to 10, asking them how the pain is, what, what the pain was like when it started, compared to what it is presently like. Another important question is, uh, does the pain go anywhere, radiation of the pain? Does it go to the flank? Does it go into the groin? And does it go into the, the vaginal area? And then timing of the pain. When did it start? Did it start all of a sudden or kind of intermittently and progressively worsening? Um, and then is the pain constant or is it intermittent? All important historical factors that can really help with figuring out what exactly the pain the patient is presenting with. And then always doing a review of systems almost, but nausea, vomiting, fevers pain with urinating, any diarrhea or GI complaints, vaginal bleeding, vaginal discharge, and urinary frequency, all very important questions to ask in the history. And then in the young female, when's their last menstrual period? Are they sexually active? And if they are, what types of contraception are they using? History of STIs. All the uh, can be extremely important in this patient population in particular, the young female. Then, of course, with every patient, you want to find out their past medical history. But in these particular patients, some pointed questions to ask are history of ectopic pregnancies. Have they had this pain in the past that um, is consistent with the pain that they've had, such as in the patient with the ureteral stone? A lot of these patients know what this pain feels like. Then you go on to surgical histories, histories of abdominal surgeries in particular, looking uh, for either signs of potential uh, bowel obstruction or also to eliminate if they've had an appendectomy, if they've had their ovaries removed for whatever reason. Then, of course, medications and allergies can help with the diagnosis. Then you move on to your physical, of course. It's imperative that the vital signs are assessed. Does the patient have a fever? Are they tachycardic? Are they hypotensive? All extremely important. Uh, you probably should look at almost uh, even before going into the room to know how sick this individual is. When doing your examination, start with soft uh, palpation. Try to locate the tenderness of the patient. Points to a specific area where the pain is. Start away from that area and do uh, soft palpation, then deep palpation, uh, moving into the area where the patient is most tender. Evaluate for rebound or guarding, specific maneuvers. McBurney's point tenderness for appendicitis. So you're looking for road sing sign, the psoas sign, the obturator sign all physical exam maneuvers that can be performed fairly easily at the bedside. Doesn't necessarily diagnose a patient, but can definitely help guide your management. And then if indicated, and uh, with the young female with lower abdominal pain, most likely is, then the pelvic examination. First starting with the evaluation of the external vaginal mucosa, looking for any injury there. Then uh, subsequently with the speculum exam, looking for evidence of discharge. 
Is there pus coming out? Is there redness? Is there tenderness? You do a bimanual exam looking for cervical motion tenderness and nexal tenderness. When doing the speculum exam, make sure to take cultures for gonorrhea, chlamydia, wet prep, as this is helpful in diagnosing as well as treating the patient as well as any partners. And then lastly, in physical exam, tap on the back, look on, look to see if they have any CVA tenderness that could indicate either maybe pyelonephritis or a, a ureteral stone. When indicated, blood work can help with the diagnosis or at least directing management of, for the patient. Get a complete blood cell count, looking for an elevation of the white blood cells, looking for evidence of anemia, thrombocytopenia. Get a differential on the white blood cells in case there's a bandemia. Since it's belly pain, get a comprehensive metabolic panel. Look at their LFTs. Get a lipase. A urinalysis is imperative, as is a urine pregnancy test. And then, as mentioned, when you're doing the pelvic exam, make sure that you have a uh, cultures for gonorrhea, chlamydia, and wet prep. Like I said, in the appropriate clinical setting, do a type and screen. If they're pregnant or there's even a serious consideration that they're pregnant, get a beta HCG. Check their coags if indicated. If you find something on your examination that's concerning, then maybe you need a pelvic ultrasound or you need a CT of the abdomen and pelvis. In a young female, there's always caution about getting CT scans. So think about if indicated if uh, an ultrasound for the appendix may be more appropriate. And then lastly, we've got the differential. You have a very, very broad differential in a young female coming in with lower abdominal pain. You have to consider appendicitis and ovarian torsion. Sometimes very difficult to differentiate and why it's important to elicit a good history about is this acute and onset and it happened all of a sudden in the ovarian torsion? Or is there more of a gradual onset in the patient febrile and has nausea and vomiting and some right lower quadrant tenderness with rebound, which would indicate maybe a little bit more of an appendicitis kind of picture. Always get the pregnancy test. They may be pregnant, they may have it, but more seriously, an ectopic pregnancy is something you absolutely do not want to miss. Tubo ovarian abscess, can, uh, you can see that if they have a history of STIs and they have pus coming out of their cervix or there's significant adnexal tenderness or adnexal fullness, a urinary tract infection can cause a lot of the symptoms or pyelonephritis. Get that urine sample. Make sure that uh, it doesn't look infected. These are some of the more common and diagnoses that you don't want to miss. There are also other problems that you definitely want to evaluate for. Pelvic inflammatory disease, and middle schmerz, hemorrhagic ovarian cysts, nephrolithiasis, inflammatory bowel, Fitzhugh Curtis. There's a very large differential here. The female that comes in with abdominal pain, particularly a young female with lower abdominal pain, means a complete history and physical, and then uh, that should definitely help direct where you want to go with your workup and your management. Thank you.